Good evening, welcome to We Repair. Um, so, I know many of you hopefully will have already watched the first part of this by now. Um, I've already taken this part and we've done the charge point repair. If you've not seen that video, I will tag it above. So this is a, a Google Nexus first gen. Um, it has got screen issues. You can see some marking down the side here where it's been damaged previously. Um, the screen does work, the touch screen doesn't. So today is the continuation of that. Uh, we are gonna get this torn down and fit our new screen. So here's our new screen. This is a refurbished unit. Um, so they've essentially taken the, taken the glass off and replaced it. The screen that's in the back is the existing one. Um, so this is just an eBay unit, which is more than good enough for what I want. So let's get this torn down and uh, we'll go from there. So first things first, We'll disconnect the power, just by pulling that cable out. And I know I taped this down in the last video, but we are gonna untape it now. So just lift the battery out. And then we're gonna start undoing some screws. So we will carefully peel this back. We are gonna have to remove this copper tape and transfer it. And we will get this peeled back. And we'll just get some of these things disconnected. So first things first, I'm gonna take this bottom speaker out. So disconnect the cable. And then we've just got three screws holding this in. So one, two, and three. And then the speaker will just lift out like that. So next thing we're gonna do, we'll get our charge dock disconnected. This should just come out nice and easy because uh, we have already, well, we've only just put this in, so it should be, should be easy peasy to lift out. Let's just do the four screws that hold that way. Sorry, five screws even, not four. And then what I will do, because I'm gonna lift this copper tape out in a minute, I'm just gonna leave it connected and we'll sort that bit out in a minute. So the next thing we're gonna do is get the other half of this cable all disconnected. So we're gonna remove this tape and this heat shield and we'll just remove this tape and expose all our chips. So disconnect the cable to the LCD, and disconnect that front cable to go into the charge port, and then we will disconnect the digitizer cable. So again, all very, very straightforward. And then what we'll do next, we're just gonna unscrew the motherboard and we'll lift that out. There is a screw hiding under here so again, we'll just disconnect this one as well, which is our power and volume buttons on the side. So that's all of our cables completely disconnected. So next we'll get all of our screws for our motherboard done. So again, I'm pretty sure that they're all the same length. So we shouldn't have any issues with this. It does look like someone's removed it before because there's a couple of screws missing. But this is only a, a unit that we're refurbing, so it's not, it's not uncommon that you'd see that. So we'll just make sure we haven't got any more screws hidden anywhere. In fact, we have missed one though. Let's just get that one done. There we are. And then that comes out as one whole piece. See, our camera comes attached to it as well. And it does actually look like the headphones. So what is that? So that's the top mic. I didn't realize the mic was modular on that. So that is our little mic at the top there, connected to the board. That should just pop back on again. So there you go, look at that. Who knew? I certainly didn't. So that's our board out. out. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect this little cable here, just like that, which uh, that connects our screen to our board. And then we just need to work around and now remove the rest of our screws from this mid frame. So all the way around the edge. So again, I'm just going to put them in my little holder off to one side here, trying to keep them in some kind of vague order. So I can put them back in in more or less the same places. This will take us two minutes, it's quite a quick job. The other thing that we do need to transfer is the, I think it's a cradle, it's a thing that goes onto the cradle, so it's just this here. 
little sort of coppery brackety thing does come off and that needs to be transferred to the oh no oh, new screens come with it okay well i will take it off so i can show you because you sometimes you do get them where it doesn't come on the new screen so we'll, i will show you that quickly and it's always nice to have a spare as well we'll just do these last three Now, the theory is that these power buttons and everything should now come with this because it's all attached to the midframe. But I can't remember how much will, so copper tape's not there. still there. I probably didn't have to even disconnect the motherboard particularly, but I just like to do it for complete, completeness. Okay, so I still feel like I've got a Mr. Screw. So there we go. So there we go, and that is that screen entirely out. And that's our mid-frame with everything attached to it. So I'll just pop that off to one side. Now, I will try and do my best to show you this. So we've got our two screens here. Let me just zoom you out a bit so you can see. So we've got our two screens. This one's got copper tape all around it. This one hasn't. So I'm going to try my best to peel this up and pop it onto the new screen. Um, just so it's seal back up the way the current one is. This copper charge port here, which I was on about earlier as well, should just lift up, I think. So there you go. So you can lift this piece out, look. It's just a retaining sort of comey brackety thing. So I will try and show you as best I can. And then these sort of little teeth just lift out and you can just transfer them to the new one. So I'll show you on the end there. Now we're missing one of them. So you can just lift them out. I don't actually need these because they do come on my new screen, which is brilliant. But should you need them, then you can just get them out really, really easy. So let's just see if we can peel this up. I'm not overly precious about if I damage the screen now because we're not going to reuse it. But I would like to try and keep this copper tape a little bit intact if I can. It's more just for... Um, Insulating the connectors on the new screen. It has been taped over, so I'm not overly worried. Worst case scenario, I could use some electrical tape. So if this doesn't come out, it's not, not the end of the world. Right. Last one. There we are. As you can see, you've got all your components there on the board, which are just taped over the copper tape. On this new one here, we've already got this tape over it. So if we can get it back in place, then great. Otherwise, I'm not going to stress too much, as I say. I don't think it's going to be a very nice job saying that. So maybe I won't bother. No, I don't think I'm going to bother. If it does cause issues, I'll tape over this with some electrical tape so that we don't get it touching the midframe. Now the only thing I'm going to do at this point, just to make my life easier, I'm going to take this little connector from earlier and I'm going to take this moment just to attach it to the screen because it just makes life a hell of a lot easier when you put everything back. So push that in and then lock it down, just like that. I'll turn this back up this way. Now our mid-frame, again, all of our buttons and everything are attached, so it makes things a little bit easier. We'll just slot this into place, just like that. And then we can start screwing everything down. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with our screws around the edge. So again, <coughs> some of these have speaker screws in them, so the bottom ones you need to be a little bit careful of, just so you can, you know, where you can put things back. The edge and the top ones are a little bit, a little bit easier because you know, obviously, you're not going to be screwing anything else into them. But some of these are for the speaker on the bottom, so it's just a little bit of a guessing game with the bottom ones. But again, most of these, in fact, all of them are exactly the same length, so it doesn't matter where you put them. The only thing you've got with the speaker ones, they are different colors, which is really good. Now I think I might have a duff screw hole at the top here, because it's not actually going in. Oh no, here we go, just need a little bit of force. So 
I made it iron out. Last four. Three, two. Now what I'm going to do, let me just check what the screw holes are on this speaker, and then we'll know where to put the last screw. So you can see we've got one, two, and three screw holes here. So our, our last screw goes in this one. Just get that popped in there. And then the next thing we will do before we do anything else is we'll get our charge dock reassembled. And I'll pop the board back in. And once we've got it reassembled, I'll follow up with this with another video on how to reset it because I don't know if this has been reset or what state it's in. So we'll factory default it and make sure it's nice and clean and ready to be used. So again, if you're interested in getting some further information on um, how to reset these devices, then uh, I'll try and link it in the, uh, the bar at the top so you can, you can see how to do a factory reset on them after they've been reassembled. Hopefully you watched my earlier video about how to replace the port on these, um, which is really, really simple. And obviously replacing the battery is really easy on them as well. And so just a genuinely nice device to work on. Right, so we've got our board. So just being careful of all your cables so you don't catch anything. And just sit that back into place and just give it a quick push down just to make sure it sits right. And then we will grab our screws. Let's just quickly get those. So I've got a couple here that I know where they went because they had little stickers over them. So we'll do those ones first. So this one here. And one over here. Hmm. Another one again. Come back to him. In fact, saying that there was one different size screw on this one. And there's a smaller black one that I will just grab. Might be for up here. Yeah, there we go. Slide over side there. Perfect. And three left. So we had a couple missing in the middle of the board before we took it apart, so I'm not going to be able to put them all back in because I don't have replacement screws for all of them. And last one, so we'll put one up in the middle. And we'll just tape, just tape that down as well, as best we can. And we'll sit perfectly flush, and then we'll start with our cables. So this is our digitizer cable. So again, line it up as best you can. And then we're looking to, let me zoom this in. We're looking to have the little like, white lines on the cable line up as best we can with the ports which is not the easiest thing in the world, but you just have to give it a bit of a push and they will go all the way in. So you can just and just see the edge of the white line there on the connect on the cable. So again, push those shut. Now we'll pop this connector down and then that leaves us just with this one at the top here. So just sliding that in again, there's a black line on the cable that should disappear. So that's that. Right, so we've got our connectors connected back up now, which is great. So the next thing we'll do, we'll just get this Button flex up here connected, so this is one for the volume and the power. So we'll just do that, and that's all clipped in nicely. And then we'll grab our speaker, plug our speaker cable back in. Hopefully, he says. Let's push that in fully. Speaker down into position. With this one, we want a black cable, a black screw at this right hand side. And we want a black screw the next hole along. And then we want a silver one at the end. And next we're going to line up our little shield at the top here. Which we took off earlier, like that. It should just clip in and push the tape down to cover everything. And then we've got another set of tape here. Which goes that way round. So just the chips exposed. Take that all down. 
and then push the copper back down as best we can. It won't hold perfectly, so you've just got to do as best you can. Put our little headphone jack cover back in place. And then last but not least, put the battery back in. I'm not too worried about this copper shield because the back will hold it down, so it's absolutely fine. So next thing, back on now. So again, just like the Samsung's, clip this into place and just push down until it clicks. There we go, all the way around. If you see a gap, push down. So all the way around. It's not clipping in as well as I like because it's a refurbished screen, but it's as good as it's gonna get. So the inaugural test, let's just turn this on. And there we go, we have a Google symbol. Now I have still got a little plastic protector on this for the minute. So, so any second now, we should have a working screen. So there we go. So I should now be able to use it just like that, which is brilliant. So that's it. That is our uh, Google Nexus 7 first gen repaired. So we've done a complete teardown and reassembly, uh, all new screen. We've repaired the port in a previous video, which again will be tar tagged at the front, uh, tagged at the start of this video. So yeah, if it's been useful to you, you've liked the video, um, you've learned something, please subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon to get all our future notifications. And again, if there's any questions you've got, then please ask them and I will do my best to get back to you. Or again, comment on our Facebook page. Um, we have got giveaways coming up as well. So if, if you're not already subscribed to our page, subscribe because there is a chance to win. And yeah, I'll um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.